Hey everybody, Joe from Lionard here. Probably just like most people, we're giving out our uh, end of the year videos or say so's and things like that. Um, and I know that 2020 for a lot of us has been a little bit of a year of some of a time we like to forget. You know, I know that right now. You know, a lot of us are still feeling the effects of a lot of things. Um, some of us had loved ones die. I, this year, had to bury a loved one. Um, not particularly due to the pandemic, but due to cancer. And, and I know it affected my family. We had to do things differently, things like that. Um, some of us have suffered some losses. Uh, I personally, um, this year, because I'm, I'm a business owner and I do hold my uh, business, you know, I do hold a business that I do have, I'm a small business owner. This year was a struggle for me to kind of keep it up and going. Yes, go the government has opened up some opportunities to get funding and things like that, but it's still been a nightmare to keep my doors open. Um, and some people would say, especially as being a Christian, where's your faith at, Joe? I thought you had this, this, this great amount of faith that would change things, you know? You're always talking about believing in Jesus and trusting Jesus for everything. Yes. Let me tell you how I put my trust in Jesus, especially during this time. I stay faithful to his word. There's many elements in the Bible where people, even through the hardest times of their life, still trusted God. I remember how uh, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez, how he talked about Gideon, how when the Midianites would raid the, the harvest fields every year during the time of the judges, and Gideon would still hide what he had, but he still kept threshing wheat. And because why? Because he felt he eventually knew that God was going to take care of him somehow, some way. Um, the woman at you know the the widow woman who uh, was at Zarephath, same thing. She only she said that she went as far as saying this. I'm just gonna click the sticks, just cook whatever I have right here, then me and my son are just gonna die. But the man of God gave her a promise. He said, take care of me first, and God's gonna take care of you afterwards. Reluctantly, she did it, and guess what? They survived through a famine. Me, this year, yeah, it's been a little tough. I found myself getting sidetracked many times. One thing I've done, which God has been gracious, and God has been awesome as far as keeping my needs met. Number one, the tithe. Yeah, I know when you hear, when you turn on these TV preachers or these evangelists, and they're always they're always talking about money. Yeah, you know, a church, though it's not really a business, but it's like a house. You take care, you, it's God's house. Sure, God can provide finances out of anywhere. But just like a mechanic who, who needs tools, tools like you and I are used to keep the house of God financed and taken care of. And believe me, as a small business owner, me and my wife and I, still did what we had to do. We even gave more than we needed to um, just to trust God. And He still comes through. So there's my faith right there. It's not perfect. Even a man in the Bible, when he came to Jesus, he brought his epileptic son. He said this one thing, if you can do anything, can you help us? And Jesus said, yes, I will. Only if you believe. But you know what the man's response was? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. 
Sometimes we have to trust God in doing those things. We have to learn to trust Him in all that's going on, even despite of all the madness. Sometimes we got to find the good in that madness. As far as regarding Lionheart's concern, like I even heard one lady say this over the radio, sometimes God puts us in these situations to stop us, to make us think and to make us to consider and even relax. I'll admit, I'm one of the many people, probably like most of you or some of you, who has a life that's always like, always constantly going on the move, 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 move. And sometimes we neglect the most important things. I'll admit. I haven't, there's times I haven't been, there's times I would miss my time alone with God. Sure, I, I have a, a phone with a Bible app and I would hear the word and yeah, I would try to get my prayer in to, you know, while I'm driving because the Bible says pray without ceasing. So it's possible to pray while you're go, uh, going about the day, not always constantly in prayer, like rah, rah, you know, but always just be mindful in how to pray or what to pray for. You know, always be in that mentality of prayer. But the personal time, God spoke to me and said, I need to have that personal time with you, Joe. And since I've been giving him a little bit of my personal time, as within the past few months, and probably even some probably even come to hear that I that I've been able to come up with some new songs and been able to pull in some old songs out of the vault and been able to get busy once again. But still allow allowing myself to take some time. That's why this year. I'm even making a change, like not going to work so early. And so I can be able to read my Bible, study and be able to spend time with the Lord. And I know that through those times, God's gonna, once again, he's gonna restore me. He's gonna give me a stronger faith through this. He's gonna give me the peace that all of us seek but most importantly, he's gonna, he's gonna reinvigorate us as a people who are desperately, desperately looking for hope. Now, even though, as some of you know, I'm kind of political in a lot of things I say, let us do the same thing. Let us return to God let us stop looking to politicians. Politicians have been the biggest problem of all this. If you don't believe me, there's I hope some of you that live in like in Michigan, um, Washington, Oregon, you know, all these states that are considered blue, you know, like New York. Massachusetts, all the all the states that are considered blue. I live in California. And luckily here in California, we have the opportunity to correct a mistake back in, that was made in 2020. No, not me, but my fellow residents here in the state of California. Let's not look to government. We've already seen they've created problems. In order for us to make 2021 the better year, we need to repent. We need to turn to God. We need to fall on our knees and humble ourselves before Him. And only then, and only then, He will heal our land. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Well, as we're ready to close out this year, just follow us because we're going to have some good stuff coming up. Until then, beloved, in his service.